Welcome to Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist or a bartender because a few shows back I made a bit of a point of saying that unfortunately the term mixologist is starting to take on a bit of a tinge of elitism and we want to avoid that because we don't want people to think that mixology is only for the elite. But I think that mixologist overall is a better term as long as it doesn't get a bad connotation on us. Because bartender, you know, doesn't really do justice to what we do. It's like calling a chef a cook. But anyway, we made a cocktail um, in recent times that involves scotch and elderflower water. And I talked about the fact that scotch tends to be neglected in mixed drinks and cocktails, which it is. And this time we're going to make a drink that actually incorporates bourbon. And bourbon is used more commonly in drinks. In fact, I've made, as an example, the ubiquitous whiskey sour on this show the way I like to make it with fresh lemon, fresh orange, um, homemade simple syrup, or bartender sugar. Either one is okay. And I've also made a drink, the Japanese Hawaiian peach blossom that uses or is supposed to use Suntory bourbon, but I don't use that. That's deep pockets. And uh, peach infusion and a few other interesting things that really kick it up a few notches. And I've also muddled cherries and bourbon. Today we're going to make a bourbon-based drink that incorporates the use of uh, cherry hearing, which is a wonderful liqueur. And last time I think I used cherry hearing on this show was actually in a tropical drink. And before that, I used it in a Singapore sling, which is one of my favorite cocktails. And this time we're going to use it in a bourbon-based drink that's going to be shaken and served in a martini glass. Now, we talked a bit about this on the other show. Um, some people feel that Drinks that are made with bourbon should be stirred only and should only be served in an old-fashioned or a double old-fashioned glass. Um, you can. That's fine. But I beg to differ. Um, drinks made with bourbon can and should be shaken in many instances. And this is a bourbon cocktail that should be shaken over ice and then poured into a glass that displays it a bit nicer than I would say an old-fashioned glass. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize the martini glass again for this cocktail. Anyway, I'm going to load up with ice and use my easy little ice container here. And this is just to show that as long as ice is stored properly and kept cold and doesn't dilute, it doesn't really matter what you use. You don't have to have fancy ice buckets. You don't have to have um, an ice maker, an electric ice storage sort of a thing like a refrigerator, but you should keep it cold and not allow it to dilute because if it does, you're going to have a cocktail that's diluted and that is not a good thing. It compromises the quality of the drink, compromises the flavor of all the ingredients, especially the base liquor, whatever it may be. And anyway, in this particular drink, you don't have to use, as I always mention, a top shelf liquor to make a mixed drink. You can use a modestly priced bourbon for this drink. Not rot yet, but modestly priced. So we're going to go ahead and free pour the bourbon in. And boy, the scent of that pour is so nice. That smells so good. And then we're going to add a bit of the cherry hearing to give that nice cherry flavor. And cherry hearing is a liqueur that has quite a bit of potency to it. So we don't add a lot, but we add sufficient quantity that it's going to meld beautifully with the bourbon. So we're going to do that. So we got our cherry hearing in there. And just for the sake of interest, we're actually going to add a bit of fresh cherry in this drink by macerating it a bit, squeezing it, and dropping it in there. And we can drop this one in there too, seed and all. 
And as we shake this up, um, we're going to do something at the very end when we um, dispense it in the glass that will add to the interest of the drink also. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it in the glass and you may think, eh, adding that little bit of fresh cherry is not going to make a difference. That's kind of silly. Actually, little things and little nuances mean a lot and they do make a difference in a cocktail. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it. And of course, I'll have to subject it to a taste test after I do one more thing with it. And that is, I'm going to add a bit of lemon. Not as much as with the uh, doctor's orders drink, but a bit. And I'm also going to add, again, a little bit of a garnish just for eye appeal. And I want to emphasize again, always squeeze your fruit by hand because you want the infusion of the peel in that drink and the oils from the peel in there. And sometimes it's a good idea to put the spent shell in the shaker. In this particular instance, no, because it will overwhelm it. That's why I squeezed it after the fact. And I'm going to taste the drink now to see if, it's, if it lives up to the hype. Oh yeah, that is good. There is just enough uh, cherry herring in there to really bring the bourbon out and to make the drink something unique, but not so much that it overwhelms the bourbon. And that was the whole point too with the elderflower liqueur. We don't want it to overwhelm the scotch and to take over the drink and turn it into something different. And we don't want that to happen with the cherry hearing because then we've got a cherry hearing based drink, not a bourbon based drink. And incidentally, this drink is called My Father's Office because we all know the jokes about cocktail lounges that are called The Office, where if the wife calls, the secretary says, oh yeah, he's in the office or he's out of the office or whatever, because the office is a cocktail lounge. But anyway, a little interesting play on the uh, lore back in the day when people used to do such things. Now, at A's, I don't think that would be a good idea anymore because companies tend to be very, very strict about uh, what people imbibe and do on their lunch break. And we can understand why. And again, we always want to reflect on the fact that we want to appreciate what the mixologist or the bartender has done for us and to savor and enjoy what they've made and not just guzzle it down like a fraternity brother. Because that's not really showing appreciation for the craft that went into the drink. And I used to think that saying that, you know, certain drinks are, quote, crafted, sounded a bit pretentious, but really that's what you're doing. It's like an art. It's like chemistry that you can actually drink. And this is a thoroughly enjoyable drink and it adds, again, a different dimension to the bourbon because of the fact that you've put some cherry in it. And what you also can do, although to me it ruins the drink, is you can put a maraschino cherry in it to kind of decorate it. But I would say that's better served uh, with a tropical drink than with this particular drink. And it might even kind of offset the good flavor of the cherry herring. And cherry herring, by the way, is a liqueur that is made in Denmark. And it's unique. It's a one-of-a-kind thing. You can get other cherry liqueurs, but they don't taste anything like cherry herring. And you notice, too, that there's an actual cork stop in it, which is kind of unique, too. That's part of the quality that goes into making it. But at any rate, again, whenever we enjoy our cocktails, let's keep our community in mind our safety and the safety of others and drink in moderation or have a designated driver at our particular function or occasion. And thank you for tuning in once again to another episode of Good Libations and seeing my father's office. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>